Occulto. Originally released in March of 2019 via Spanish indie developer Atura Studio, is a science fiction horror puzzle game set entirely within an abandoned zero gravity mining facility. Which in concept sounds pretty damn perfect. Uh, wow, okay. How the hell long has it been since I looked into a sci-fi horror game? The mini-review of AVP2 kind of fits, I guess. But aside from Stowaway, I'm honestly surprised that I've barely touched science fiction horror in the last year. My massive raging obsession for all things alien or spooky, lovecrafty, event horizon space horror is a huge reason as to why I even enjoy horror media in the first place. And the mere concept of a small group of underpaid space travellers stumbling across something unknowable and horrific? Yeah, I'm all about that shit. So, yeah, seeing as I haven't played anything from that market in the last year or so, I figured now would be a pretty good time to jump back into something science fiction. And after scanning my Steam listings for inspiration, Occulto very quickly stood out. I've had this game in my library since it dropped a few years back, I think I even tried it out very briefly before dropping it and moving on to something else. I don't know why, but never mind, we're here now and that's all that matters. And yeah, to go back to that space traveller finding bad stuff casually floating around in space thing, Akalto is absolutely playing along with a lot of these established tropes. To put things simply, you are tasked with exploring an abandoned mining facility with the key objective being to figure out what the hell went down in there. And from your earliest look into your surroundings, it isn't looking too positive. From burst pipes to loose wires, to electrical conduits going haywire and some pretty clear signs of violent foul play, the main character's mission starts off on… not exactly what you'd call a high note, and it just keeps getting on more and more unsettling. And again, as a concept alone, while this is by no means an original idea, I love the premise of Occulto. It's one that just never quite ceases to lose its charm for me, no matter how many times I see different versions of it. And there are tons of sci-fi horror properties out there that have all tread very similar waters of spooky unknowable space horror. There's no denying that at all. If anything, it's a reliably fun trope that can be pretty much anything you want it to be, either serious and meditative or schlocky and dumb fun. And as for Occulto, a cheap and cheerful indie game that clearly just wants to toy with some classic horror ideas in the zero gravity puzzle format, well, I can appreciate just sitting back and enjoying the vibe, regardless of originality. So now I guess the big question is, is Occulto any good? Well, yes and no. So to kick things off with the positive side of Kalto, and to just put this right out there, I do believe that the positives completely outweigh the negatives I'm going to mention. From the very first moment you boot up a Kalto and start exploring the first level, you'd be hard pushed not to notice that this game is absolutely dripping with atmosphere. Every level ends with a password locked door that you need to figure out in order to proceed, so exploration is a big part of a Kalto. And even just the simple act of drifting forward into a dark, tattered corridor, or descending to the next level below you, completely unsure of what may come into view once your head torch shines upon it. Wherever you go, there's an immediate sense of unsettling atmosphere that keeps you wary and hesitant. And this, of course, is only then further intensified by the fact that your movement is extremely limited. The zero gravity of a culto is as literal as it comes, as are some of the dangers of simply attempting to exist within an oxygen-deprived vacuum of nothingness. You might, for example, accidentally pierce your suit due to an explosion or a stray shard of glass. Or alternatively, you may find your propulsion jets clogged after drifting too close to a ruptured pipe. Hell, you can even break the suit headlamp if you happen to accidentally smack your head against a wall or ceiling. 
So to keep yourself from falling prey to such dangers, taking things slowly becomes something of an instinctive habit. While there are occasional health packs and repair kits to fix yourself up with, you're better off avoiding problems altogether if you can. And this is where the lack of gravity will at times work to your favour. Directing floating debris into other obstacles is a useful means of knocking away floating glass or detonating explosives at a safe distance. And keeping as many doors open as possible so that you can quickly get to a health pack before it's too late also does help. But regardless of how used to the game's mechanics that you may become, you never quite reach the point of feeling comfortable. Something is very wrong with the station, and with every hint that you find or body that you come across, you're waiting for the moment where you discover why. And also, as a quick side note, if you're going to play this game, you're going to absolutely want to while wearing the best headphones that you can find, because the sound design plays a huge part into what makes the atmosphere of Occulto so compelling. The steady hiss of your thruster jets, the faraway clunking and grinding of the facility still apparently being in some form of operation, or the occasional pang of 80s John Carpenter bass notes peppered with the eerie sting of high-pitched horror synths. It all comes together to offer a fantastically unnerving experience, and this is without even mentioning the game's visual style, which is surprisingly a lot more effective than it first appears. Initially, I didn't really care all that much for the cutesy spaceman looking dude that you inhabit, there was something about the slightly cartoonish animation that just wasn't clicking for me, but that moment of hesitation vanished after about 5 minutes. Because if you're playing a culture in the dark with a decent set of headphones, the game's excellent use of lighting and sound design really starts to get its claws into you. Occulto is a dark game. There are massive sections of the screen just completely blotted out by black nothingness, which only then further serves to heighten the suspense. You won't know what may be behind a door or floating debris if there's no light source ahead of you to indicate it. So you're going to be blindingly pushing through until your headlamp is past whatever might be stopping your field of light. Which, as mentioned before, is a field of light that you can break. This is all really good stuff, and the earliest levels easily stand as the most compelling of the game simply due to how fresh and unfamiliar it all feels. However, this is where we now have to slowly drift into the other stuff. Which is to say, actually talk about what you might be dealing with in the game. And before I do, I'm going to offer a mild spoiler warning. It's not really a proper spoiler, but if you've liked what I've said up to this point, a culture is worth trying out as blindly as you can. I also can't help but notice that the marketing for this game does avoid showing what we're about to get into. It seems pretty clear that the devs wanted this to be discovered in-game, so I'm going to respect that for 5 more seconds. Okay. I've talked a lot about the surrounding nature of the game, the atmosphere, and how much I just want to stick my head into a barrel of it and breathe very deeply, but sooner or later you're going to come across the enemy of Occulto. And this is where things start to go a little... meh. Okay, hear me out. This moment right here is the best part of the entire game. Your initial stumble across the monster without any overdramatic pretense or scripted cues is legitimately frightening. The swell of menace in the music, the eerie dew on Kayako sounding throat croak. This is what all that lovingly crafted tension has all been leading up to. And to Occulto's credit, it does take its time in reaching the monster. It isn't until a few levels in, or roughly half an hour-ish, depending on how quickly you get through them, that you actually get to see what's been killing everyone. But in spite of how great an introduction this is, this is also where things start to slip downward. Because the monster kind of sucks. Now, true, it sounds and looks threatening enough, 
The sound design is once again pitch perfect for what the developers were going for, and the use of darkness to hide the location of the beast is effective. But the introduction of the monster also starts to reveal some cracks in the game's mechanics that start off being fairly innocuous, but eventually become downright infuriating. For starters, the movement and overall intelligence of the monster is actually pretty lackluster. Most of your encounters with it can be pretty easily bypassed due to how slow it is, and also due to the fact that all you really need to do is just shine your light on it while slipping by, and you're pretty much good to go. It doesn't follow you for a very long time at all. Failing that, lure it into a room that you're not using and trap the fucker. It can't pass through walls or doors, so once you've caught it, you're free to just finish the rest of the level in your own time. That being said, there will also be moments on the flip side where your limited movement really starts to frustrate you. But it's frustrating for all the wrong reasons. I've praised the game's use of lighting a lot, and I stand by that praise. But why oh why does our heroic space ranger not have a handheld torch? Even if it was just a limited function item, maybe you need batteries for it, or you can only use it for small amounts of time due to your suit's power source, fine, it would still be a very welcome addition to the game. Because when you're trying to look upward into darker areas, or especially when you're trying to look below you into pitch black nothingness, you literally cannot see where you're going. The main character will not direct his head downwards enough to see, unless you gather enough downward momentum so that the camera angle, and by extension the character's head torch, then shifts in your intended direction. So yeah, fine, the game does still offer you a form of this. Maybe I'm even exaggerating a little. But if you're cautiously creeping around with your eyes peeled for something spooky, well, you're out of luck. So you're just hoping for the best that you don't sink your feet into the monster's eagerly awaiting space goop. I even tried to do this thing where after getting chased by the monster into a dead end, I was essentially performing weird shit space ballet in the hope I could just angle my motherfucking head torch downwards enough just to see if the coast was clear. And what's even worse is that you almost get the impression you needed to be inconvenienced like this to make the game that little bit more challenging, simply due to the fact that the monster isn't all that threatening. Why isn't this thing faster or more aggressive or more creative? Why can't it figure a way out of a room once trapped? Is the Eldritch space horror about as physically incapable as a Yorkshire Terrier? It's a floating ball of space gas seeping into the vent system to pop up again at a later point would have made for some pretty damn effective scares. It's exactly what made the Alien of Alien Isolation so terrifying. And also to briefly touch on the game's camera system, while throughout the majority of the game it is perfectly reliable, there will be the occasional moment where it just completely goes bonkers. I don't know if it gets caught on a particular section of the environment, it seems to happen more often within the asteroid, or perhaps again it struggles to compensate for the fact that it needs to take the angle of your head torch into consideration. But regardless of whatever is causing it, when it does happen, it really kills off your sense of immersion within the game. So with all that being said, is Occulto worth your time? Well, I still think so. I have my hangups, and some minor overhauls to the core gameplay mechanics would have been a welcome improvement, but overall I still enjoyed my time with the game. The ending was curious enough for a final chapter, the atmosphere and suspense is reliably engaging from beginning to end, I love how this game looks and sounds. I like Occulto. I just wish I liked it a lot more. And I don't know, maybe my hangups are simply because I wanted something different from Occulto and that wasn't what the developers had in mind. Maybe it's a case that, instead of focusing all of their attention on the horror stuff, the devs instead wanted the game to be a more relaxed experience. More focused on the scattered hints of story and unlocking the puzzle doors thing. Because there's certainly some merit to looking at the game from this particular point of view. Occulto, for all its spookiness, is still a fairly chilled out experience. So for someone who wants to experience a 3-4 hour sci-fi indie title with flavours of horror inspired puzzle solving, maybe it's a lot more for you than it was for me. So try it out and see what you think. It's stupidly cheap even at full price for god's sake, why not? But for now, that's it from me. As always, I'd like to thank my wonderful supporters on Patreon for their continued support, in particular the highest tiers, Game Master, Dark Raptor 86 BFD Survivor, and Shikotsky. Thank you all for watching, I'll see you on the next review.